Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode. This time we're going to talk about a Photography 101 episode, and we're going to talk all about light metering. I have to tell you, I'm using a new webcam, and this one has gotten rave reviews, and I'm not so sure I'm crazy about it. It's the Logitech 930E. Um, what don't I like about it so far? Um, it's not focusing very well. It's, it's going out of focus a lot. And I really don't like the way it sounds, the microphones, on my Mac. Now, I may be doing something wrong. I hear everyone else says it's great. But to me, the microphones sound terrible, so bad that I'm actually using an outboard microphone. I'm using a separate microphone to record this. So, so I don't know, maybe one of you can give me a tip on how to get my sound better using a Mac and this supposedly very great webcam. Yeah, it's, maybe it's just a switch I need to click someplace. But today we're talking about light metering. And so I wanted to go through some terms and then talk about the different types of light metering on cameras to get you kind of familiar with those modes so you could use them most effectively. The first term I want to talk about is reflected or incident metering. So when you use a camera and you point it at something, what's basically happening is you're getting the reflected light off of that subject through the lens. So this is TTL metering, but it's reflective. If I use a light meter, okay, here's a light meter, and I'd say I put it right next to the subject and I click the button, it's going to give me the light that's actually shining on the subject, and that's incident light metering. So there's two different types of light metering, just depending on if it's being reflected into the camera or if you're trying to get the light directly off of the subject. However, how does the camera meter light? Well, if you have a DSLR, what you probably have is a little sensor that's actually designed to just meter the light and maybe to register colors and do other things like that. But it's separate from the actual image sensor. And why is that? Well, because the image sensor is covered up by the mirror until you press the button uh, and, re and take the picture. So in the early days, the type of light metering that most cameras had was something called average metering. And what average metering did is it looked at the entire, the entire frame and it picked an average light, like a, kind of a gray level, where it wasn't too bright and it wasn't too dark. And in many instances, that would work just fine. But if you were in a situation like I'm in right now, where that window over there is very bright, that could throw off your metering and you might have to do some additional adjustments. Most cameras now, in fact, all cameras that I know about from point and shoots all the way up, have what's called, um, well, it's called different things by different brands, but it might be called evaluative or matrix or intelligent or whatever. And what it does is it divides up your frame into multiple zones. You might have 10 zones, you might have uh, 40 zones, you might have 100 zones or 1,000 zones or whatever, but it's dividing up that, that frame that you're taking into multiple zones. On a DSLR, that that imaging can be very sophisticated and it's using it with its computer um, that that data that data information and it might for instance say well if you're focusing on this thing right here I'm going to pay more attention to the exposure there or I might pay more expense or uh, more uh, uh, attention to what's closest to me because I think that's what you want to focus on or I'm going to look at the different colors of the scene and evaluate my exposure based not only on closeness but also colors because that can impact the overall exposure of the scene or some cameras will even have data libraries of thousands of photographs and it might try to use the data from the exposure sensor with that database to come up with the right exposure. Now, if you have a camera where the actual image sensor is exposed, and that would be this camera if it was in live view, 
or it could be a point and shoot camera or a mirrorless interchangeable lens camera or like the Sony cameras that have the translucent mirror technology. You're probably going to use the entire sensor, the image sensor to do your light metering because it's available, why not use it? So once you have the image sensor involved, now you can do some types of intelligent metering. For instance, you can for, uh, say, oh, I think that's a face, so I'm going to expose more for that face. So you have different types of metering. Even the, the metering on a DSLR, it's incredibly sophisticated. So it's not like the, um, the, the, the one from the sensor is necessarily going to give you a better exposure. It just might allow a different kind of exposure, like a face, for instance. So that's, that's the type of metering that most people use most of the time, and it works out just fine. But there's other options available. One is called center weighted. And with that type of metering, what happens is you concentrate most of your, your sensor's energy, your, your uh, exposure sensor's energy on the center, and then less and less and less as it goes away from the center. Now, that's a mode that I rarely use, but I would imagine it would be okay if you had a scene that was generally similarly lit, but maybe the center was either a little brighter or a little darker than the general scene. Again, it's there. I'm sure people use it. I don't use that metering mode very much. But one mode that I do use a lot is called spot metering. Now what spot metering does is in the, in the classic sense is it will meter on the center of the frame. Um, and it'll take a very tight little area and it will meter that spot. Now this is great if you're going to do uh, focus and recompose. And by that what I mean is you center your subject, you press the, the shutter halfway down or you use one of the, the buttons in the back that if you can do that. And that will both focus and meter on the center of the frame and then you recompose. So, so let's say um, I was over, over here. All right, so I would put this in the center of the frame and then I would recompose to maybe make myself a little more off-center, a little more appealing shot, um, and then take the picture. And that works fantastic because now I'm exposing correctly for the thing that I really want to be exposed. Now, of course, things have gotten more sophisticated. This is my own term. I call this spot plus. And on many cameras, what you can do is if you choose the focus point, the spot metering will follow. So that will happen with a camera like my DSLR. If I choose a focus point that's not the center, the spot metering will follow. It will happen with other cameras like uh, mirrorless interchangeable lens cameras, um, for instance, and, and um, uh, of course other cameras too. Typically, less expensive cameras and even less expensive DSLRs will just use the regular spot metering. Um, or you may need to go into the menu and turn on the kind of traveling spot uh, on some cameras. And some cameras just do it automatically. So it just kind of depends on your brand and your camera. I have not found personally a huge disadvantage just having using just using the spot in the center but if you're doing a lot of photography where you know you're going to be metering off to the side and that's where you're going to be let's say you're doing a offset portrait or something then having the ability to move both might offer uh, some advantages to you so those are the general types of metering options available. You might find that your particular brand might offer another option or two. I know Canons offer something called partial metering, which kind of seems like center-weighted metering to me, but maybe it's a little bit different. And probably other brands uh, will have other little uh, sorts of things. But if you remember matrix metering for most situations and spot metering when you have a lot of brightness, darkness differences, I think you'll do pretty well, just, just understanding those two different modes. So with that, I'd like to say have a great day, and uh, please give my podcast a listen if you get a chance. It's called Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. It's on iTunes and other podcatching sites. Um, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe, and I would also really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up, thumbs up. And as always, have an absolutely wonderful day. Take care.